Hi, this is Ed from Wright. Hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to talk through uh, our spindle, what's inside, how it works, why, why it's designed the way it is, and what some of those benefits are to you. So we're just going to work top to bottom on the spindle. Um, we have a keyed shaft up here, and we use a taper lock hub on the shaft. And so uh, once that hub locks in, there's no movement or play, and the hub actually grips the shaft, and that's doing most of the work in the key way is really more to index things, um, to keep things shift from shifting while it's being assembled or in case you hit something. But um, it's a solid setup with no um, wobble or whatnot. The top of the spindle is held together with this clip here once it's all assembled. And then we have a top cap. Now, the leading cause of failure in spindles is not due to mechanical failure. It's typically due to either the grease coming out of the spindle or moisture getting into the spindle. And so what we do here is we have this top cap and um, this groove right here protects it from, from a pressure washer. So if you spray water against this spindle here, a little bit will go in this crack and it will run around the other side and drain out without getting over the top here. Now, up in the top of this cap, we have this seal right here. It sits against this cap and that keeps um, air, dust, moisture, anything that could up, get up past that point from getting past there. And we fill this upper chamber with grease. <clears throat> now, the bearing is a seal bearing. There's two seals on it. Uh, but we put grease on the top of here because what happens through the life of a bearing that's mounted horizontally like this is a little bit of the oil will uh, dribble through the seals you know, over time. And so by putting accumulation of grease that's held above the upper bearing, um, it gives us a lot uh, longer life of the bearing because this upper grease will bleed through the upper seal in, into the bearing as the, the grease that's in here bleeds out. Now, because it's a seal bearing, um, the grease that's in there is suitable for, um, you know, if, if, if there's no moisture going in into it, about 20,000 hours of running time. But um, what we're fighting here is the elements. And uh, this, these, uh, the labyrinth and the V-ring seal here and the grease on top and this seal up here all are part of that scenario that helps keep the grease above the upper bearing. We also have an O-ring sitting here behind the bearing that the bearing floats in and that keeps grease from weeping around the outside of it, around the back and into the main chamber. Now inside the main chamber, we also fill this up with grease and this grease sits above the lower bearing and feeds the lower bearing through its life. And again, we have another seal here and we've got a lab labyrinth coming down underneath this edge, and this edge is set up so that things like um, twine, wire, uh, silt fence is probably one of the worst things that can get caught around a spindle, a plastic bag. It keeps any of that from working its way up to the, the bearing. Instead, it will um, get stuck around this end of the stub shaft, and if you take the blade off, you know, that plastic puck or whatever's wound around there will just come right off um, and not destroy the bearing. <clears throat> um, and also underneath here, same setup, any moisture that makes it through this small crack bleeds through the other side before getting up to the spindle shaft, especially when the spindle's running. Now the housing itself, this is cast iron, ductile cast iron, so it's really strong, uh, but it's also not brittle, um, and that's important. And we have um, a four bolt flange here. There's a couple different approaches in this industry. Some folks have really large spindle mountings, some have smaller mountings, and um, really it's not like one is better than the other. What's important is that between the deck and the spindle, we have enough structure and reinforcement in place there. Um, if the spindle's really big and you know, webbed out underneath here, it can um, affect the cut quality. You, you, in certain places, you want the air and the grass to pass through uh, where a spindle is sitting. And so um, the housing itself being too large or tapered out can be a bad thing. Um, and then the other thing is that the spindle is something that will eventually wear out. And when you replace it, you'd rather the spindle be a smaller, lighter, less expensive component that's getting replaced rather than a very large, more expensive uh, piece. So we put a lot of our bracing into the deck um, and we use a smaller diameter mounting on the spindle itself. Um, to take advantage of those, those things and, and the uh, airflow around here. <clears throat> now, uh, we have several different uh, styles of, of spindles. They're all based on the same concept. Um, most of our machines have a threaded hole in the bottom. 
mount the blade up on here. Um, and we, over the years, have made a lot of mowers with a through bolt uh, going from the top to the bottom, with a nut on the, on the top of it. Now, the reason for that is if you have a bolt just on the bottom and you take a wrench and try to unscrew it, uh, there's nothing to grab the spindle, you know, to, to hold that torque. And so it can be difficult to take the bolt out. And when you have a nut on the top, you can put a wrench on both sides to unscrew it. Um, now, now that um, cordless impact wrenches are much more popular, uh, there's a movement more and more towards putting um, a bolt in the bottom rather than the through bolt. Because with those cordless impacts, you can get them anywhere, um, easy to use, they're much more affordable. Um, and when you use them, you don't have to put something on the top of the shaft because it's using impact to, um, to loosen it up. So um, there are both types out there. And actually, if you have a machine with through bolt, you can always replace it. If you uh, want to replace the spindle with the uh, bolt on type, um, the outer dimensions of the spindle are, are identical. Uh, and then the other thing is on some machines, we mount the spindle below the deck skin, and other machines we mount it on the top. When it's mounted on the top, we've got carriage bolts underneath, so they're round-headed bolts. There's nothing to snag on there. Um, we do that where the belt drive on the, on the upper is, is taller. On machines with a lower belt drive, we mount the spindle from the bottom of the deck. Um, either way, it achieves the same end. And um, so we have two different mounting styles here. Now, um, there's a couple different approaches to bearing selection in a spindle. Um, if you make your bearings too large, then what happens is the, the balls in the bearing are traveling faster because they're going around a larger circle. And that can actually add fatigue or wear to the bearing over its life. So um, a larger bearing is not always better. A uh, bearing that's too small is also not great. Um, if your bearing has uh, very small balls in it, then that means there's um, the, the point load on the race where the ball sits is higher, but there's more of them to distribute. If you have uh, larger ball bearings in there, then the load per ball is distributed more evenly, but there's less ball. So it's sort of, there's some trade-off. There's a lot of calculations that go into um, bearing optimization, selecting the best bearing for a spindle. So it's really about the right size. Big bearings are not always good. Small bearings are not always good. It has a lot to do with the speed. Uh, do note that these spindles go really fast. They go faster on most deck sizes. They go faster than the speed of the engine. Um, so there's a huge amount of um, fatigue that happens in this setup. What we're, what we're fighting here is um, the number of rotations the spindle is going to experience through its life and keeping the spindle cool. Um, and when you're cutting normal grass, there isn't really high loads on these bearings. Um, now, the further the bearings are apart from each other, the less that load that's on them, right? So if your bearings are close together and you have your belt pulling on this up here, you have more of a, of a force on those bearings. So this setup keeps the bearings far apart from each other. Our bearings are a little bit on the larger side, which helps um, protect against things like impact, hitting a curb, hitting a uh, root, something like that. Um, and so that's, that's a lot of why we've selected this bearing size. Now, the other way to do bearings is to use a taper roller bearing. Taper roller bearings are really good at high loads, but taper roller bearings inherently have a certain amount of scuffing that, that takes place in there, and so they tend not to be so good for high speed. Um, usually a taper roller bearing might be in something like a trailer axle, where you're dealing with a couple hundred RPM and not three or 4,000 RPM. Um, so taper roller bearings, they're really good for high load, but they have to stay greased to keep them cool, and if the grease in the upper one uh, settles to the lower part of the chamber, uh, that bearing will chew itself up. So um, they're good, but you just really have to look after them. We've chosen to use the ball bearing setup and keeping grease above our upper bearing because that allows these spindles to be maintenance free and to last a real, real long time. Um, this spindle is rebuildable, but generally you'll find that you'll put enough time into it where it's not worth it. Um, to rebuild the spindle, you take the clip off the top, push the shaft out the bottom, uh, push new, a new bearing on the, on the bottom of here, reinstall it, push the upper bearing in from the top, and then oftentimes these caps, if you pull them off the shaft, they'll get uh, damaged. So typically you'd want to buy replacement caps. Um, again, you'll find that your 
chance of it lasting as long as the original spindle goes down a lot and the time and energy put into it and using the right grease that matches the grease in the bearing and whatnot uh, generally is not worth it. There's also um, aftermarket spindles that you can get for our machines that are out there and they are considerably cheaper. I bought a number of them. We've done some testing and whatnot with them and a lot of them, you know, out of the box they have crunchy bearings um, and they're just not uh, machined uh, very precise. It's important that where the bearings are mounted in here is very precise because any kind of, kind of um, binding shimmy or wobble will significantly reduce the life of the bearing, increase the heat that's in there. So um, this is a service-free spindle. Uh, generally, it'll last um, well over 1,000 hours, in some cases 2,000 hours, but you somewhere between one to 2,000 hours would be, in most cases, um, how long they, they last. So uh, that's a summary of our spindle, why we've built it the way it is. If you've got any questions on it, put them in the comments, and we'd be glad to answer, answer those questions.